and last year I did a presentation on uh, Pinball Republic. Uh, my name is Neil McRae, um, I'm a pinball player, enthusiast, um, event runner, uh, and I've got Mark. My name is Mark Patnode, I run Backhand Pinball. Uh, who's part of our team. Uh, we run a, a, a um, we're together we run a, a big pinball event in the, in the UK and Mark does a lot of other uh, events for streaming. So. Let me give you a quick update on Pinball Republic. So Pinball Republic is a, um, a um, club that we have in London. I did a presentation last year on setting up a co-op club. Martin here is also a, a participant in the club. Uh, and there's some members in here that, that um, we love and, and appreciate, Tony. Um, just after we did the presentation last year, we unfortunately um, had a problem with water. Um, this was, uh, the tw I want to say, the 22nd of December. Um, the UK had really bad weather. It was probably one of the coldest wet winters we'd had. Um, and the place flooded. Um, we were very lucky. Had, it, had that happened a week later, we probably would have lost every single game. Um, because the, the whole site was closed for two weeks for the um, for the for the kind of Christmas and New Year holiday, and no one would have w where we are is kind of in the middle of nowhere. No one would have noticed the fact that uh, we had we had water leaking. Um, luckily, our neighbour next door heard it. They notified of uh, notified us. Uh, one thing I'd say is always make sure you know where your water turns off. Um, we were actually in a shared building where the water turned off was not easy f for us to access. We were watching this water. Um, kind of flood the, the building from above uh, and there was not a lot we could do about it. Um, we were really lucky and, and I'd, I'd say, you know, with, with the kind of change in weather patterns that we're seeing, I would recommend everyone that's running a location like this to ensure that you've got some sort of flood sensor. They're, they're like 10 bucks off Amazon. You put them on Wi-Fi and they send you a ping. If, and and if, if, if this, had, like I say, if this had been a week later, we would have lost literally all of these games. There's no question in my mind about that. Um, fortunately, we were lucky, um, and, our, and our members helped us. Literally, the only real kind of challenge we had, there was one game that had a bit of water in the, in the cabinet. Um, fortunately, it was, it was coated in a way that it didn't damage the game. We dried it all out, left it for a while, par powered on. We changed all the feet. We had changed a few legs. Uh, that was challenging on some of the older games. We had to kind of blowtorch the, um, the feet off, but we got back up and running at the uh, end of January. Blowtorch is a very um, interesting device that you don't want to let certain people hold in their hand. <laughs> um, okay, so unfortunately we have a little bit of other, well not bad news, I see it as an opportunity. Um, the location we're in, they're actually going to redevelop it, so we're looking to find a new location. Uh, we're trying to find a bigger location. T today we can do about 60 games, we're probably going to find a location that can do about 100. And, and actually, this site's important for the, for the kind of link into the next, the real kind of talk for this, which is um, we run, a, we, we run a, a, an event called the UK Open. Uh, it's the third year, um, two, second year post-COVID that, that I've been involved in running it. Martin ran it many years before. Um, and um, I'm going to play this video that, that Mark put together that kind of gives you a kind of a, a kind of quick overview of, of the event. Um, and then we'll kind of talk through some more of the details. So that's kind of the, the Mark put this video together after the, uh, the event. Oops, I don't want to watch it again. Um, but what started this process, at least for me and, and probably many other users that are in tournaments, I went to an event called Pinburg. Anyone else go to Pinburg? 
Um, and I was blown away by that event. It was just insane. A thousand players, 400, almost 500 pinball machines. Unfortunately, the event's no longer with us, which many of us uh, are a bit sad about. Uh, in the next 10 years, we're going to run a pinburg size event in London. Um, and as soon as we've got the dates, we'll let you know. But we are, we're on that journey. We're, um, we've been buying games. We've been making space. We're, we're kind of at about 150 games. We need about 400. Um, the, the recent COVID madness in pricing hasn't helped us, um, although we, we we're predicting a, a resurgence of se sensible used prices over the next couple of years. Uh, most of you will not be happy with that, but I will be. Uh, I'm a buyer, not a seller. Um, but that's the kind of journey we're on. And, and you know, Mark and many of you um, that have been to tournaments, um, Indisc, we got a lot of uh, inspiration from Indisc, New York City Pinball Championships, uh, Texas Pinball Festival, the guys at District 82, uh, here at Pinball Expo, uh, there's loads of tournaments also in Germany. Uh, there's a massive tournament scene in Sweden with Boras, etc. There's a couple of Swedish players here this weekend. Uh, Bulls and Balls in Fulda in Germany. Uh, we have a couple of big events, European uh, Pinball Championship and European Championship Series. And actually what I felt was that, having, I, I'm lucky with work, I get to come to the US and I kind of tag on a couple of, week, couple of days holiday at the end of it or at the start of it and, and come to great tournaments like the one we've got here in Chicago this weekend. And um, what I felt was, is that at least I felt in Europe, that we didn't have that kind of big scale tournament. Yes, we've got uh, EPC and ECS, but they were kind of, they, they weren't kind of what I would call big. Uh, I'm named after Neil Armstrong and in my entire life I've kind of done things that I like, I like to do big things. Um, but the thing is, is I wanted to start with, okay, what is, what is a tournament really about? Uh, and it's about the players. There's nothing else that matters other than the players. And, and that, you know, it seems obvious, but I've been to many tournaments where I felt that the players were the last thing on the organizer's mind. Not, I'm not challenging the organizers, just people think about things differently. And, you know, and, uh, you know I won't read the slide out, but, you know, players, you know, they want to they wanna have fun, they want to win, and, and they want to be challenged. And, and we wanted to start off um, from that um, position. And, and unfortunately for us, actually one of, the, one of the other big tournaments that still happens in this because of very common, very similar um, kind of thinking. And, and actually we kind of stole a lot from, from those guys. Um, this is the venue that we're in it's, uh, for the last two years, the Hilton London Croydon. Um, and and I kind of I mentioned location very specifically. If you're lucky and you've got a venue like DA2, it's really easy. You open the door, you turn the lights on, you keep the games running, and it's great. We don't have a big, big place like that in the UK. In fact, in Europe, Bulls and Balls is probably the closest, but it's still space limited. Um, so, you know, you need space, you need access, you need power, and power is one of the big challenges. I need internet, but what you also need in a location is an understanding of the player-focused mindset. So you don't want hotel people giving you grief, you don't want people turning the power off mid-game, which, which happened last year. Um, fortunately, no one, no one uh, was, was killed by it, but we had, we, had a, we, had a, we had them working on something that they shouldn't have been working on. They ac accidentally hit a button, the power went off, uh, me and Mark cried, um, and, uh, but life went on, we got the power back up and running. They didn't just turn the power off for us, they turned the power off for the whole hotel, which was kind of funny. There was a lot of upset chefs. Um, you also need volunteers, and this, this is, this, after the players, this is kind of the second thing. Um, we're very lucky, we've got a great club of about kind of 50 members that really support us in doing the events that we want to do. We've got a wider pinball community, not just in the UK, but actually more broader than that. When, when we run this event, we have people coming over to help us run it. Friends and family are also really helpful. Um, and, and, and as I said, some of the players that, that come off, but, but you know, the, the, this is a, when you're running a tournament that isn't in your venue and you've got to move stuff, and you've got to set it up and you're there for literally for four or five days, volunteers are crucial. Um, together with that, you kind of need a strong core team. Um, you know, we, and we kind of split our team around uh, techs, um, organizing the volunteers, that's a full-time role for someone, running the front desk, planning the games, the heavy lifters, as I like to call them, um, the, the um, TD team, so don't try and TD an event like this on your own, you'll go nuts, trust me, I tried it. Um, 
game testers. You want to have games that play well and, and are reliable. Um, we had a few of them streaming. Mark um, did that, and we'll, we'll come on to that. And then the other thing is uh, being named after you know, Armstrong, I'm a big NASA nut. And, and if you imagine uh, all the stuff that NASA did without, they take, without taking photos, the amazing things that they do, you'd never know about. So I've always had this thing, take millions of photos. Okay, you might chuck away half of them, but the other half that you've got, they'll, they'll give you a really good time of, of, of remembering it. And, and even though we've all got these phones with cameras on them, Quite often, we, we, we don't use them as effectively as we could. Um, this is the core team, Mark's photo. Um, <laughs> and and um, there's other things that you need some more specific support on. So the tournament software. If you're on a big tournament and you're thinking about using Excel, let me tell you, do not do that. There's, a, there's some great software out there. Carl runs DTM, and he's a superstar. That's what we use at, at the UK Open. But also, Andreas uh, runs Match Play which many folks use, they, they, they have kind of different sweet spots. Um, Andreas is very good for match play, unsurprisingly. Carl's very good at the kind of card um, pump and dump format. Logistics, so the first year we did this, we did all the logistics ourselves. We hired vans, we moved the games. It nearly killed us. Uh, we decided this year to kind of get some specialists in that with heavy lifting gear that w and, and strong arms that, that could, could help us with a move. That was a massively positive decision made a big difference the whole weekend. Um, trusted tournament friends, and I'm, if you're ever running a tournament, I'm a volunteer, I will be your friend to help you. Um, when you're making big decisions, like what format should we use, how many players, what type of machines, um, it's helpful to run that by someone who's been in, you know, been in the business maybe 10 years. Um, I run a lot of stuff um, by a guy in, our, in, in the UK called Craig Poole and said, hey, what do you think of this? Because he's, he's got so much experience. Um, and then another guy, uh, Josh, um, who runs IFPA, I guarantee in your event you'll have some decision making that you like wish that you had help on. And Josh, I, I mean, even at the crazy hours that we were running, com you know, we're in UK time, which for Josh is minus six hours, he was very responsive on a couple of issues that, that, that hit us with. Um, formats, I want, you're probably familiar with these, I won't go into the detail of them, but Pump and Dump, you're, this is what they use at New York. Match play, which is what they use at Fulda and, and, and Pinburg. Card format, which is what we use and what Indisc uses. Um, head to head, which is what, what, what's happening here in Chicago. And then there's this other format that people like called ping golf, where you're kind of, you, each game's got a par and you're trying to reach the, the par with so many balls. Um, they're all great formats. It's, it's good to mix the formats up if you can, or, or if you've got a lot of tournaments that are card or match play focused, maybe running a head to head or a pump and dump to give some variety to the players in your region. Um, everyone asks me, everyone focuses on the games. You know, as I said, I focus on the players. Um, and th the first thing is, is don't bring a game that you think might not work. Let me tell you, that's, that's just, just like, I mean, it sounds bleeding, you know, obvious, but if you've got the slightest doubt about it, chuck it. Um, watch out for things like bonus time. So we use a lot of Zakaria games in, in Europe. They've all got this thing called bonus time. It's very variable. It tends to wind players up because they don't understand how you get the bonus time. You know, why did he get 60 seconds and I only got 10? Um, you know, you, you just, just turn it off. You don't need it. It doesn't make any difference. Um, you want games that are fun to play. Um, you know, bring in, bring in stuff that's brutal or horrible. Um, you know, it, yeah, you want to maybe have one challenging game as a, as a a paragon in the picture, you know, that might be a really gruesome game. But those games like that generate the, p the real pinball moments where you see someone do something amazing or, or see someone make a big mistake, which uh, we've, we've all walked away from a pinball machine with that, if only. Um, you gotta test the games, and when you've tested them, you gotta test them again. Quite often we get people, hey Neil, we, you know, if you wanna borrow our games, uh, you know, we're up for it, which is brilliant, really appreciate it. But don't get them on the day of the event. Get them early, test them, make sure that they are, you know, they're going to make it through um, four days of gruesome play, literally non-stop play. Um, variety and rareness is a plus. So I mentioned Zakaria. Um, you know, we've got them. We had we had a, a, a magic and a mystery castle in our, our bank this year, um, and people loved it because it's a game that they haven't seen. So you want to you want to kind of mix it up. But the key thing is you want to get every game like like. You know, people are coming to play pinball. 
I, I, nothing worse when I go to a pinball tournament and there's like eight games, no one's playing anything on. We'll get, you know, why, why, we go, why isn't every pinball machine literally getting milked for every second of the day? And that's where a card format and pump and dump format can, can really play because you want to, you know, as people are playing, you, you, you can kind of generate money for the prize pool, which I'll come on to later on. The picture here is actually a big game. Some guy was selling a big game in, in Kentucky. This was the week before the UK Open. Um, and I was, I've been trying to find a big game, so we bought it, we got it airlifted over, we tested it, we got it into the bank, and it played flawlessly the entire weekend. He was blown away that we did it, but um, it, was, it was a good deal. Um, budget, so if you've got a budget, add 15% to it right away. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna find some wacky stuff, or the venue, venues, unfortunately, are the geniuses of nickel and diming you for things. Um, oh, you want internet access? Oh, you want the lights on? Oh my God. Um, you know, just, just, uh, just be wary of that. Um, you know, expenses, the venue, internet moving, materials, banners, trophies, parts, accommodation. It actually is those little things. You know, the games and everything else, everyone gets that. It's the little things that, that um, you don't. Try and build a brand, get your name out there, make videos, even if they're bozo videos on, on, on iMovie on, on your phone. It's amazing how, how well they go down. Um, players want to win money. I don't think there's any question about that anymore. Uh, we, you know, there was a debate where that's really a US thing or a global thing. I've run two money-making tournaments in the UK and they've both been massively oversubscribed. Um, but make the prize pool inclusive. Run a ladies, run a B final, run a juniors. Juniors is super, super, super important because it brings parents. And when you bring parents, it engages them in the thing that their kids are interested in. And anything you can do to engage parents of potential pinball players is a big win. If you're in a hotel, try and get a deal on rooms. I couldn't do that with a Hilton. I'd, it's just, they're just crazy. Um, but anyway, um, and actually often the lowest part of the cost for the players is the ticket. They're booking a hotel, they might have to get a train or a plane or drive. Um, the, the ticket can be quite often the lowest. So you've done all that and it's game day. So this is, our, this is from last year, our, our first event. Um, we had about 60 games there, Mark? Yep, Something yeah, like about that. 60. About, about 60 games. Um, here's the first thing that happens on game day. Something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, right? So last year we had some guy turn the power off. Um, that, was, that was stressful. Uh, actually, one more bit about the background. I ran the Olympic Network for London 2012. So that was a stressful event. This is just a bit of pinball for me. So everyone was amazed how cool I was when the power went off. You know, you've just got to think about it. If, you're, uh, if you get kind of upset easy, running pinball tournaments might not be for you. Um, delegation counts. So things are going to go wrong. Games are going to break. The tournament software might have an issue. There might be a, a, an issue of a stuck ball. There might be a player that pressed a button he shouldn't have played. There are the, the number of things that could go wrong, I, I could spend hours talking about it. Um, it's, it's just one of those things, and you've just got to, you know, hey, that's pinball, we're going to move on, we're going to do the best we can. And, and what, what I found amazing is that the players want you to be successful. They're not looking, they want to, they've come to this event, they want it to be great. So they, they're very helpful, they're very supportive. And, you know, one thing, just like the budget, you know, adding 15%, expect even more to go wrong. Yeah. You, you should be expecting double to go wrong, because if it's only, you know, half as that, then it, that's, an excite, that's an exciting point for you. Actually, one of our techs is in the back, Bob. Um, having a strong tech team um, that drink and, and supplying them with lots of coffee <laughs> will definitely make your life easier. Um, the techs are the, are the, the kind of superheroes in, in this event. Um, and I'm going to show a bit of uh, w one of the videos. I'm going to actually jump forward a little bit. Uh, this is a video um, that Mark put together. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. Absolute insanity. Julio. Oh, I'm seven. So sorry. <laughs> oh my god. And now something else. Oh. Oh, don't tell. Don't tell. Oh! He tilted! Oh! Oh! That's so just. 665 lost. So that you, you can't see it because the quality's not so great, but the oh, background to this is he, he was already through. He just drained the ball. Oh through. my god. He lost out on two thousand no, pounds of prize money. For a tip. Points in bonus. And and it's these are the pinball moments we want to generate. And oops, um and, and one of the things that's really important, you're you've got players in the room, but you've got potential players out there. Um 
I brought Mark in as a really experienced streamer. He's done loads of big tournaments. Um, and, and I'll let Mark talk through the rest of the slide, but you need tons of gear. Um, you want to make this. You want to make this as professional as you can, Mark. Yeah, and so you know, between the tons of gear and um, you know, using an experienced streamer, having someone that's went through the issues of gear going down, batteries dying, um, players being upset, players not wanting to be on camera, have a light on them. You know, all of those things come up quite a bit, and you need to be able to roll with those players and. Um, knowing players helps, but also having the confidence in knowing that what you're doing is important for the tournament. Um, you know, having that experience, but also knowing that um, I am not part of the tournament in as a player, so my job is to be invisible. I don't want the players to know that I'm there. I don't want to be in their way. You know, I rarely want to be on camera even because people aren't watching Mark. You know, they're watching the game. They're watching Escher versus Jason versus, you know, Roy. So... Um, that's really important. Um, you know, streaming pinball at home, it's not the same as a tournament. You're not setting up mic stands with three games and, you know, giggling while you have a beer. Um, you know, you're, you're really trying to make this uh, look as professional as possible. And so um, a big thing about that is, you know, the magic behind the scenes. You don't want uh, the streams to, you know, your viewers to see the rig rolling around. They don't want to see the top of your head. They don't want to see a camera right in your face while you're waiting to put it up. You know, you can switch to different scenes showing brackets, really giving your commentary a second to shine. Um, you know, that's as Neil has people supporting him in every corner. You know, the commentary is the streamer's biggest support. You know, I can kick it to them to tell the viewers, tell the players, you know, what's going on what the delay might be, or just to fill time if there is a technical issue, and that's the magic. I don't want anyone in this crowd to know something's wrong. So being able to hide that behind the scenes is really important on the stream side. Um, and But also the rooms. So one of the things we wanted to make was, was a bit of a, so in the UK we're known for our pub culture, right? We, people sitting around the bar for having a few beers. So we, we, we tried to build the kind of UK open pub inside the event we had big screens we had lots of beer um, and we, we wanted people to watch the play especially in the finals for two reasons one it's exciting but two we want to give the players some atmosphere you know there's nothing better you know you heard the noise there from the crowd when when um roy tilted uh, just the atmosphere that great and everyone's talking about it it's just a, it was a phenomenal atmosphere in the room so you know and, the, and the, i noticed that they've done something similar downstairs um having a place where you can get folks together and they can talk and they can they can they can enjoy the tournament, even though they might not be in it anymore, um, is hugely valuable. Um, but also it's kind of it's kind of for me, sometimes you get to the end of it, it feels like a blur. This was the the um the one of the highlights of the event was was the juniors tournament, seeing these little kids play um the future of pinball. It was it was it was it was lightning to see. Um and, and it was great to see the winners um, all play. Everyone got a prize, and the, the um, and the guy's name's gone out of my head, it's gone, which I'm really embarrassed about. But um, he he played amazingly. He's a bit older. That's one of the other things is, um, if you do an under 16 tournament, you get kind of some really top players turn up and like, hey, I'm going to win a free Xbox. Um, you kind of have to figure out how you make it for the juniors in a way that gives them a competitive chance. You know, we had we had that, the the young girl who was uh, I think four years old all the way up to, to kind of 14 year old players. Standing so, on a pelican case. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, we were, <laughs> we were, you know, we were trying to, um, you know, really encourage people and, and parents to play at, you know, my goal was every year is to double the number of juniors that we've got and, and we've done it th this year and, and hopefully we'll do that next year. Um, and then enjoy the moments, you know, we had a, we had a, you know, the other thing is inclusivity. We had a great ladies tournament. I'm really determined to, to increase that. Uh, some of the, we had, Rachel here who was a player um, and was a also a fantastic supporter over the weekend. Um, and, and also, you know, you, you, the goal is to bring people together, uh, to have a bit of fun, challenge each other in the tournament, and then, and then hopefully go home with a trophy in your hand. Um, seeing, you know, I talked about pinball moments. These are the pinball moments when you're seeing um, stuff happen and people talking about what's going on. Um, there's Bob, he's at the back. Uh, he didn't know I was putting that picture in. Um, uh, also one other thing is signage. Um, I'll put this slide in. Let people know what's happening and where it's going. And, and you, when you're running these things awfully, often in your head, you, because you know it, you assume everyone else knows it. That's never the case. Um, something that actually personally I've kind of had to kick myself on, or rather my wife did. Um, 
And there's the winners. Um, sorry, Mark. No, and more so with the signage, you know, generally you're going to be hosting this at a public location. So if it's a hotel, you're going to have more people staying Randles. at the hotel that aren't even there for pinball. If they're going to walk in, you need them to know what's going on so that they don't feel immediately annoyed that they booked a room for a week with their family to get away. We had so many people walk into the free play room and go, wow, this is one of the greatest bonuses to staying here for a yeah. week. And selling that also grows pinball in another direction, which is important. And these are the, these were the top four players for the for the final. The one other thing, this is, <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. Don't underestimate how tiring this is. So this was at the end of the first race, the first uh, UK Open. I had my wife's car, I filled it up with petrol, drove off without paying, because I was so tired. <laughs> And they sent me this. They sent me this uh, nice photo saying, "Hey, you stole some petrol." It wasn't that I didn't have the money. I just, I was like a zombie just trying to drive home. Um, it is tiring, um, it's, it, you know. And I me we mentioned streaming. You know, Mark's. You know, literally from when we opened the door till nine to when we closed the door, which should be midnight, but was actually on, on one occasion two a.m. You've got to, you know, you've got to put in. Uh, you've got to be charged. Make sure you've got Red Bull or some coffee or something else um, and build a plan. I, I was going to put a picture of our plan in, but it's quite hard to fit it in and make it make it worthwhile. But, you know, we had a plan on a page for every day, who was going to be where, what they're going to be doing, when they're going to be around. Of course, you know, the first victim of, of any a, any battle is the plan, and it was no different for us to some extent. But, you know, having run this a couple of times, you know, the first time we ran it, some of the team had never been to a big tournament like this, so they, they didn't know, so so sharing and, and, and um, stuff as much as possible. Yeah, and, and knowing that, you know, making sure your team is all on the same page of, you know, we're going to live here for three days. You yeah. Know, out of the 72 hours that we are there, uh, Neil and I, probably uncountable, I was, I was live for 45 of them, streaming. Yeah. That doesn't count the setup or the breakdown or anything in between. So, you know, between Neil and I, we probably spent over 55 hours in that room alone. Yeah, on the, on the Saturday night, I went to bed at three and got up at six. Yep, um, same. And, uh, I, you know, it was, it, and that's, you know, that's part of what happens. And, and, and also as part of, you know, the more effort you put in, the better the effort comes out. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious 101, but, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we ran a, an event. I think we've got time for one or maybe two questions if anyone had one. Yes, Jeremy. So the question was, um, in Europe, I'm the only tournament that uses card-based card qualifying. I actually think there's one other tournament that does, but I, I can't remember who. I think it might be one of the Spanish tournaments. But So I use card-based qualifying because I believe it is the, is the ultimate test for the player. It's not just about one good game. It's about four or five good games. And, of course, the, the elite players, if you give them ten good games, they'll still do well. But but the kind of mid-pack and, and, you know, the other folks, you've got to give them a target and... and and in my mind, you know, uh, you first start by having, you know, if you think of yourself as a Formula One team, you have the odd race where you do well, right? That's okay, but you, you want to do well in every race. So the goal of card format is to challenge people to do well on every game. Um, and they don't have to be top, but they have to be consistently good. And because of that, it allows, you know, it, it, it does generate more of a challenge for players. It's annoying when you've got four good games and in your last game you 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 you, you blow it. Um, that's pinball. Yeah, play, and play better, as my good friend Steve Ritchie would say. And with card format, you know, if you were planning on running a card format, expect players to be frustrated. Expect <laughs> players to come back and say, "I didn't like this," or yeah. "This is a really hard format. Why are you running it this way?" It's just it isn't for everyone, but. You know that would be the same for pin golf. It would be too easy for the top players, and then they would complain. So it's it's finding that balance, that middle ground. Yeah, and and I mean, all I mean, we've had kind of almost the top fifty come to the UK Open. They all came back, and you know, yeah. so from and and lots of other folks across the board uh, um, have have come back. And actually, that's one of our big challenges for next year. We were one fifty the first year, one seventy five the second year. We had 25 active standbys, so we could have been 200. We just didn't have the, the, the venue. You know, back to my Pinburg journey, you know, our next stop is 250 players. That's what we're going to be aiming for next year. We've got the games. We need a venue, which we'll find. 
Um, we probably need more techs and definitely a lot more coffee. Um, but you know, we want to we want to make it bigger and better. At the time, on you know, on the on the on the Saturday, if I was to say to Bob, "Hey, we're going to run a bigger one next year," he'd probably punch me, <laughs> um, and I deserve it. But you know, it, it, when when you when you walk away and you see you know what we've achieved and you think about it, yeah, there's some tough moments. Um, it's it's it, about seeing people enjoy it and, and also trying to make the team enjoy it as well. We've done you know we we want to do more of that so that it doesn't feel like a complete s slave weekend for us, which for me at least it did for a bit. But um, that's got um, a lot better. But the one thing I'll stress is a team sport run an event like this. You can't do it on your own. You've got to have great people that support you. And also, you've got to have people that are signed up to it. Hey, look, we love that you want to volunteer, but only volunteer if you're really going to be there and do it and work your ass off because you're going to need to work your ass off. So if you're if you 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 know you're doing this for the for kind of for the love of it, um, and, you know, we have a great gang, which and we have a bit of a laugh throughout the whole weekend. Last question from Alan. Only only intelligent questions are allowed in this seminar, Alan, just to pre-phase you. <laughs> yeah. The biggest cost is a venue cost. Um, hiring a venue is expensive, especially in central London. Um, it's the same challenge the New York guys have for NYCPC. So to hire the Hilton for three days is 10 grand a day. Um, just, just to give you an understanding, basically. I'm fortunate I've got sponsors that cover that for us. Thank you, sponsors. I didn't mention them, actually. Oops. Um, <laughs> but thank, thank you, sponsors. Um, and, uh, yeah, big shout out to, uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and actually, lots of people say, I'll oh, just get sponsors. Actually, it's very difficult to get sponsors. I'm lucky I've got it through work and people that are suppliers to me, and, and I've been fortunate on that. Um, but it is difficult to find them. Then, then that's where you've got to adjust your fees to come in and the prize pool, and, and you've got to do that math. But that is the biggest cost, um, basically. And I think with that, we will, we will end. Thank you, everyone, for coming. If you've got any more questions, feel free uh, to ask us. Yeah, thank you very much.